All right, well, a few more bits of audio here, Jim. When are you getting to me? You're going to come up in this next one, but you're going to have to sit through a little bit to listen to it. If at any point there's a big moment you want me to stop and you have to say, here's what I think of this, let me know. All right. But we are on the road to Cornette. Hopefully we're on the road to the end of the show. We're, we're close. We are on the road there. The path is another story. But let me get this queued up. Here's Tony Khan. Starting right now. We've got four more folks here who have not asked questions, so we're going to have all four of you get to ask, ask a question. Okay, and then, hell, maybe can I do one more? Will we get five? We'll do four that I've been, and then I'm going to flip Good the Lord. Point. Let's do the four. We'll do the top five. Let's do the four. Here we go. Let's go. Here we go. Starting with this, Joe. Thanks. Tony Anthony Pyrus, PW Insider. You actually just said a, a name that I was really happy to hear you say, Mercedes Martinez. Obviously, she got the probably the biggest win of her career tonight. And going forward, she looks to be a big part of the Ring of Honor process. Can you tell us what goes into something like that? And the, tell me about the, the Ring of Honor women's division, because uh, I, I, I really like what she does. And I thought the match tonight was an underrated banger, as they say. She's Thank you. She's been tremendous and it continues to be a tremendous champion. She was a great interim champion for Ring of Honor. And then, of course, won the unification match on Dynamite against Deanna and has continued to be now a great champion here at Death Before Dishonor. I have a ton of respect for Mercedes. The way she arrived in AEW as a mercenary, uh, getting involved, doing other people's uh, dirty business in some of the matches. Doing I, she's other a better people's dirty match. business. Yeah, what's wrong with that? It just It sounded off color. Go ahead. Pro, and uh, I have a lot of respect for her. And it's funny, I think I told this story, but if I haven't, I really, I like, it was like, exactly, I can't echo what Dax said enough about some of the great legends. One person who's fairly outspoken about stuff he, when he doesn't like something in AEW, but at times when he has, and to be totally fair, but I think he's known as being at times a critic of AEW is Booker T. And I have tons of respect for Booker T. I've been watching him since I was seven years old or eight years old, going home after school, like rushing home to watch uh, Global Wrestling Federation when Booker T and Stevie Ray, before they were even known as Harlem Heat. So and, Tony was the one uh, watching back, that show. I was a little bit older than Tony, and look, I'm a wrestling fan. I was home, so I watched it. I never rushed home to watch Nobody it. Nobody rushed home. That was a bad show. 1993-94 GWF with the Ebony Experience and yeah. Moadib, and it was just, it was a bad wrestling promotion. John Hawk. But anyway, let's go back to this audio all the way to Gary Hart and Sebastian. And, uh, and so I, I've been a fan since I was a little boy of Booker T and his brother, Stevie Ray. And uh, he's been vocal. And actually, one of the first times I met him and talked to him, at least since I was a little kid, you know, first time certainly in a, when I was a professional wrestling promoter, was on Chris Jericho's cruise. And he was quite adamant that I should have signed Mercedes Martinez. And I was pointing out to him that, okay, so I really liked her. She came in and did the original All Out in 2019. And I actually was the agent on the Women's Casino Battle Royale on All Out, and I put it together, and she was the Joker, oh and she was one of the final people in it. So to say that when I put the, 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 the order of entry and the thought into her, it would be an understatement. But also, if you remember, in 2019, talk about a different roster. I mean, it was a complete, it was a very, and it was a leaner company. This was before we'd gotten the TV extension and had new money coming in. And then I started to really build up the roster in early 2020, if you remember, with free agents that came in, the big crop in 2020, including FTR came in 2020. Uh, Ty Conti on the women's division, of course. And then you saw uh, Br Mr. Brody Lee. I mean, some great I'm champions, going to great cut stars my in the world throat. of wrestling. It's almost there. I promise. I promise. And this isn't, Tony wouldn't want you to do that. So stop it. Many, many others. So in 2019, we just didn't have that budget. She signed not long after that. And I just kind of missed the boat. I told him, I was like, I really liked her. And honestly, if that TV money had come in sooner, I would have done it, honestly. Okay, look, it is hard. Let me fast forward a little bit and see if I can get <laughs> Let me just say this. Watching this, Tony Khan is incredibly likable. Like, I can't say anything bad about it. He just seems like the most likable person. He's a wonderful person. I've, and I've said, if he had just used his money and connections with TBS to start this promotion and allow experienced people to fucking operate it where it wouldn't be a joke and an embarrassment, I'd have been right there in his corner. But now I wish that somebody would shut him fucking up. World and both <laughs> Thunder Rosa at Double or Nothing and here at Death Before Dishonor. Uh, again, Serena Deeb in both championship matches has been outstanding challenger, and she could challenge for any title in the world at any time. She's a great wrestler and great match. And Mercedes, 
uh, great pro. Like I said, tons. Of, and I, I'm echoing Dax's point out just to, I would just beat that into the ground that like Booker T has earned the right to criticize or say whatever he wants about anybody in the world of professional wrestling. And I, and I, and I take it all as constructive, including what he said about Mercedes, which I took to heart. So I hope he, he knows I was listening to him. Um, and I saw him recently and he looks outstanding. He just looks so good. I mean, for anybody of any age, but to have wrestled three decades plus and be uh, in the condition he's in. And after all the great matches and all the toll it's taken and, and all the years and, and still look like Booker T does, it's pretty amazing. And he's one of the best. So, so that's just my thought, no matter what he says about us, just as also some of the other vocal critics of AEW, whether it's uh, including Jim Cornette, one of the more vocal critics, but at times also a lot of what he says is very fair and include, I appreciate the positive stuff. And certainly uh, he was a mentor uh, in my uh, wrestling watching before when he was before he uh, knew what he was doing uh, as a as a disseminating information and uh, his philosophies. I learned a lot. So uh, you know those those are great examples of people. Now he's trying to blame me. AEW Ring of Honor, me, whatever they want in pro wrestling. I'm not going to play any more because I can't. But he mentions at one point talking about wrestling with his friend Rick Rubin and how it's one a.m. But he's like Greg Valentine. He's just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> but what are your thoughts? Again, you trended. It wasn't just Dax. It was Dax's boss. It was the man well, yeah, who... Yeah, because the, the fans go insane when Tony says, hey, shouldn't say anything good about Cornette. Because they listen to Harpo and, and his play friends who have buried me because I was telling the truth about him all this time. But what have we always said about Mercedes Martinez? She's great. Wonderful talent. And uh, so it wasn't just Booker T. It's that people who have been around... I know this is a a wild statement, but just bear with me. People who have been around any particular business profession or endeavor for years and years can usually tell you which other ones are good or not. And occasionally you get a, uh, somebody in there with a, with a dog in the fight that will profit in some way financially or personally by promoting someone else's talents to a person to give them a job. And that's, you know, that, that happens, obviously it happened quite a bit in AEW. That's why they got the first roster they ended up with all friends wrestling. But in most cases, if you get an unbiased opinion from anybody that's been in the business for a while, they know who's good and who's the shits. So it's not like I was seeing anything that anybody else couldn't see or that Booker T was or that anybody else wasn't. It's just that Tony can't because he's never been in there. He's never done it. He's never been involved at any level whatsoever before he did this. And he took the words of the wrong people and put together the world's highest priced roster of outlaw mud show talent. And now when people praise him for signing someone. It's like, oh, see, I'm getting the hang of it. No, you ought to be able to fucking figure this out. Either that or get you a new head of talent relations instead of yourself or QT Marshall, good God. Whatever, the, is QT still taking those notes? I'm not sure. If, you know, when you publicly reveal that QT Marshall is doing a lot of your paperwork and timing out your TV show, then you have made a serious mistake and not because QT's an asshole or a crook but the same thing I, if I'm going to fly in an airplane I want the pilot to have done more than flown in the seat next to me before I want him to have a little experience with actually driving that piece of shit go ahead well that's it that's all the audio I'm going to play that was the AEW wait media hold story. on hold on allow me to give everybody a nice round of applause for the end of that segment.